Welcome to this lecture on the nature of violence. I'm Dale Snoward, Professor of Peace Studies, Philosophy of Education and Peace Education at the University of Toledo. This discussion of the nature of violence in both its direct and structural forms is based upon the seminal work of Johann Galtung, in particular his article, Violence, Peace, and Peace Research. We will explore in this lecture the nature of violence in its direct and structural forms. If we take uh, peace to be uh, the absence of violence in all its forms, then the core problematic of peace is violence. And if we also take, in a more positive sense, the notion of positive peace, as peace is the condition of the presence of justice, and if violence is a if violence is a violation of justice, uh, then it is also a, the core problematic from that point of view. So violence is at the center of our consideration of the meaning and pursuit of peace and justice. There are three broad categories of violence that we can, based upon Galtung, that we can use as our framework. Uh, direct, structural, and cultural violence. Direct violence refers to uh, uh, physical violence, the use of force that causes harm, physical harm, and perhaps a psychological harm. Structural violence refers to the existence of, of institutions and structures of society that function in a way that harm uh, its members. Uh, it's not personal or direct, it's uh, impersonal, uh, grounded in the nature and the functioning of institutions. And cultural violence uh, can is defined as the belief systems, the patterns of thought, the ideologies, uh, etc., that, that justify and sustain uh, structurally violent institutions and structures of society, as well as justifying and sustaining um, direct violence in support of uh, structurally violent institutions. So structural, uh, cultural violence refers to ideas and patterns of thought that uh, sustain, uh, sustain violence in its other forms. And all three forms of violence are urgent matters of justice. As we'll see, uh, violence can be defined as the inten intentional avoidable harm, which delimits the full realization of the potential of human beings. So Galtung defines, and I quote, uh, I'm quoting him here, uh, God, uh, violence is present when human beings are being influenced, so their actual somatic, that is physical, and mental realizations are below their potential realizations. Violence is here defined as the cause of the difference between the potential and the actual. Violence is that which increases the distance between the potential and actual and that which impedes the decrease of this distance. In other words, violence can be defined as that which is dehumanizing, that prevents, blocks, retards, uh, eliminates uh, human potential. The ultimate violence, therefore, is uh, to inflict death on another, on another human being because death uh, eliminates that that being's potential. Violence, uh, it, we therefore it has to do with harm. Harm defined as the de degradation of the potential of the person, and we could add that uh, the harm done uh, must be avoidable if it is to uh, count as violence. So we could define violence as avoidable harm. And Gautung writes, uh, 
when the potential is higher than the actual uh, is is by definition avoidable, avoidable, and when it is avoidable, then violence is present. When the actual is unavoidable, then violence is not present, even if the actual is at a lower level, is at a very low level. So uh, a naturally occurring phenomenon like a hurricane or a tornado or a viral pandemic uh, is not violent as such because the harm done, it's harmful, very destructive to human potential. Uh, but it is not, we, we, we don't consider it to be violent because it's unavoidable. Uh, there can be instances, however, in the case of natural uh, harmful events that, of irresponsibility by humans uh, that uh, rise to the level of violence as avoidable harm. For example, if, uh, if damage is caused during an earthquake on buildings that were uh, built with inferior, inferior materials to cut costs, uh, we, could, uh, we could claim, we could argue that, the, that that was an act of violence by the builders uh, because they skimped on the materials. Or if a government does not respond appropriately and adequately to a viral pandemic causing uh, greater spread and greater harm, then we could uh, argue that the government has committed violence. Uh, they have committed avoidable harm. So the, uh, the basic idea here is that violence has to do is defined in terms of avoidable harm, and harm is defined as uh, dehumanization, as the uh, degrad degradation of, uh, of human potential. Direct violence in this as avoidable harm uh, exists if there is a physical or biological object that is harmed, and if there is a subject that acts. So direct violence pertains to uh, an actor uh, who acts in a physical way uh, to harm another being, uh, another human person, for example. So direct violence has, mainly has to do with physical violence, uh, which has physical and psychological effects on, on the uh, object of the violence. Um, and that's how we normally think of violence, I believe, uh, that it is, uh, it is direct and physical. Uh, a punch in the nose is violent, uh, causing avoidable harm. And this is a, this is a direct form of violence. The use of uh, military weapons uh, cause is directly violent as well. Structural violence is where uh, there's no uh, particular subject or person that acts. The violence inheres in the stru in structures. Uh, the violence, as Gautung notes, the violence is built into the structure and shows up as unequal power and consequently as unequal life chances. Above all, the power to decide over the distribution of resources is un unevenly distributed. So structural violence refers to uh, violence, uh, avoidable harm inherent in the functioning uh, and the rules and the design of institutions that uh, result in unequal power uh, among the members of those institutions, uh, among the members of society, and, uh, and consequently as unequal life chances. That is, uh, the probability of reaching, of, of benefiting for the society is uh, unequal if, uh, if there exists structural violence. Structural violence is uh, very stable over time. It's, it's uh, institutions function over long periods of time. Uh, structural violence has ex exploitation at, at its core, and therefore it is socially, uh, it constitutes social injustice. It's upheld by the summated and con concerted action of human beings. Um, 
That is, uh, it's not one individual acting alone, but in uh, 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 groups of people in institutions acting to design and regulate uh, the structure and the rules of those institutions. Um, it has objective consequences. Um, there's no subjective intentions involved. The people inhabiting the institutions are not malicious, are not uh, intentionally attempting to harm others. Uh, it's the institution itself which is functioning in a way uh, that is harmful. And this is the essence, for example, of institutional racism or s systemic racism uh, as an example. So structural violence is person invariant. Uh, it, do it doesn't vary by person. Um, it's inherent in the structure. The violence is built into the structures. There's no personal violence or threat of personal violence um, in, in, uh, in the case of structural violence. Um, we can see examples in data, for example, of incarceration rates in recent decades among white uh, men and black men uh, all white men, all black men, and uh, black men with no high school diplomas, and white men with high school diplomas. Uh, we can see that black men with no high school diplomas are over six different age groups from 1960 to 2010 had much higher, exorbitantly higher, incarceration rates than, um, than all black men or all white men uh, as well. The criminal justice system, and one, one, this data suggests that the criminal justice system is uh, working in such a way that it may be causing avoidable harm uh, to a certain segment of the population. Uh, Drug-related arrests, arrest rates by race, white and black, much higher for black, black, black persons, even though white and black persons engage uh, in drug-related activity, the arrest rates are higher uh, for blacks. Detention status after arraignment for felony defendants, uh, white defendants, uh, are released more often than black defense, uh, defendants on their own reconnaissance. Um, the uh, jail rates, uh, the detention rates are much higher for blacks. Um, and the release on, on, on reconnaissance is higher for whites. Uh, plea offer types for felonies. Um, are, are skewed as well by race, with uh, many more, a high, much higher percentage of black defendants uh, going to jail or prison than, re, than whites. Uh, higher rates of time served, uh, fines, and uh, community service for white defendants as opposed to black defendants. The distribution of, of, of prison sentences are also are also um, skewed in terms of race. Um, the uh, percent of um, longer sentences for convicted blacks is higher than for convicted whites. This, uh, these data uh, taken together suggest uh, that the institution of cr uh, the criminal justice system is functioning in a way that is biased towards uh, African Americans, in particular African American males. And this would, uh, if these data are actor accurate and if we had increased more data, uh, we could conclude that the criminal justice system
is functioning in a way that's disproportionately harmful uh, to African Americans, uh, suggesting some bias, some prejudice, some malevolent discrimination uh, within the functioning of the institution. And we've seen this also, uh, uh, this is also verified in terms of the recent uh, shootings of African Americans by police uh, without uh, seemingly cause. The so this suggests that, uh, this is an example of how structural violence uh, may work uh, in one segment of the, of the society. Another example is the Citizens United Supreme Court decision uh, some a few years ago. In, uh, the Supreme Court ruled that financial campaign contributions constitute speech and thus are protected by the First Amendment. They concluded that money is protected speech and suggested that political donations could be unlimited and anonymous. The impact is structural of this decision. It structurally exacerbates political inequality. It may, it may be, it's an example, also another example of, of structural violence in the political domain, uh, generating uh, inequality among citizens, that is giving advantage to those citizens with greater resources. Uh, race has, uh, has a long uh, history of structural violence in the United States and, and true for other countries as well. Uh, slavery was a structurally violent social system Human beings uh, conceived as property. The agricultural economy of the South was structurally based in the exploitation of slave labor uh, with, with corresponding social, political, legal, and ideological structures that supported it. Slaves were the most valuable commodity in the economy, and wealth was contingent upon slave ownership. So slavery is a clear example in, in history, in our history, of structural violence. Uh, that, uh, that structural violence continued in the postbellum era under the uh, social structure of Jim Crow, what was called Jim Crow. After the war, after the reconstruction of the South, the social structure of the South was reconstructed uh, to approximate the slave system. And that system was based upon racial segregation uh, in public places, in employment, etc. Um, it engaged in political, it was based in political disempowerment, the violation of, it violated the right to vote of African Americans, the right of, of free association, the right of freedom of speech, uh, etc. All aimed to uh, disempower, politically disempower uh, African Americans in the South. And this uh, form of structural violence was uh, reinforced by direct violence of a terrorist nature, the Ku Klux Klan, uh, lynching, police brutality, uh, a racially biased judiciary, uh, etc., um, served to prop up the racial, racially segregated and politically disempowering and economically disempowering. Uh, structure, uh, social structure of the post bellum South. Uh, a clear, also a clear example of structural violence. Uh, this, uh, this kind of structural violence continues in American history. Michelle Alexander has uh, documented in, in what she calls the new Jim Crow the targeting of black men through the war on drugs resulted in the uh, decimation of communities of color um, and the criminal justice system, as we discussed earlier, is uh, functions as a, perhaps functions as a contemporary system of racial control. control. Uh, Alexander argues it does. 
and it re relegates millions to a permanent second-class status. The elimination of political rights, the establishment of social stigma. And this uh, new Jim Crow uh, functions through the institution of schooling as well uh, in the school-to-prison pipeline. Uh, but uh, pr uh, poor schooling uh, leads to uh, higher incarceration rates among African American citizens. So there's a direct connection between educational inequality and the structural violence of the new, new Jim Crow. Direct and uh, structural violence are empirically independent. There is no necessary causal relationship uh, between direct and structural violence. Uh, one is not presupposed by the other. However, as Gautung suggests, they are continuous with one another. One shades into the other. So they're not uh, logically or empirically uh, interdependent, but they often uh, present uh, as uh, interconnected. They often uh, uh, are uh, appear as uh, related phenomena. They often go together, in other words. Um, so uh, violence, from this perspective, uh, can be defined as either direct physical uh, force and harm done, avoidable harm done, or it can be structural. It, the harm can be caused by the rules, design, functioning of social, political, and economic institutions. Violence from this perspective is defined as, the, as avoidable harm, and harm being the degradation of human potential or for short, short dehumanization. In the, in the next lecture, we will uh, discuss the nature of oppression and domination in relationship to structural, structural violence. Thank you.